Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. Has it been a month since I posted the last video already? Oh my gosh, I don't know how y'all do it. I should have just made a reaction channel. You know, that would have made my life so much easier. No, but I'm back now and I'll try to annoy you with two videos every week this time. And I've been secretly working on some big projects in the background. So I'll start showing you some sneak peeks in this episode. So in this episode, I just want to give you a quick demonstration on how we can use server actions, how to handle error states, how to handle pending states, but also full type safety. So let's give it a crack. Not like the drug, not like crack drug. Let's give it a shot. That's better. Well, that makes me think of alcohol now. Alrighty, let's get started with server action. So I have a new project here in Next14, and I just set up two components. They're both empty. They just have like a H1 in here. Again, you don't need to follow along with this tutorial. Uh, just like sit back and chill, get a drink. That sounds much more fun than actually writing code. Okay, so I'll just quickly show you kind of how, th how these work. So I'll go in the post form. Now, if you want to do a form, you probably the most popular package out there is React hook form. And I'll also use chat CM to basically display uh, just a nice input here for us. So I'll just replace this. Again, it's not a form tutorial, just, but I'll go over it quickly. So again, we just have a form field here and this field is gonna render out this input down here. And here we can change the description. This form message acts as a way to display like error messages um, if the input's not correct. And then finally down here, we have a button as well that has a type of submit. Okay, so to get these working again, I just need to import everything from chat CN. So I'll just quickly head over here to the top and I'll copy paste these over. As you can see the form and unsubmit is still erroring out. So I'll just initialize the form with use form hook and we don't have that. So let's just bring it up in here. And also this Zod resolver, which essentially is gonna validate uh, this input for us. But we don't have this forms schema yet, so let's import that as well, and I'll show you how it looks. We'll say import form schema like that. And that for now is just a simple uh, Zod object that has a string on it. All right. We'll also add this button component from chat CN. There we go. And the final one that's left is this on submit. And to do that, we can just go here and define a function on submit. And the nice thing is that we can infer the values as well. So we can say it's a type of form schema. So the values here will automatically be type checked. All right, so it's safe to call anything in here. All right, so we are ready to make an action. How about we create a post? So what I like to do is in my server components here, so I have my drizzle set up, as you can see here in my index. Here's the schema as well, which is just an ID and a content of text. And then in my actions here, let me just clear everything out so you can see. What we can do is just add this use server to the top. So now here we can just say export const create posts like that. And you'd set this equal to an asynchronous function. And here you have those values uh, from the front end, right? So here we can say new post is equal to, I'll import my database here. Where is that importing it from? At, so we can just do server slash index or just server, right? Because index is automatically gonna be recognized. Okay, so away DB and here we can do, a, let's say an insert. We'll insert in the post schema and the values that we're gonna add are gonna be content is going to be type of values dot. Oh, look at that. We don't have any type safety. So that's the first problem when you're creating just a normal server action. But thankfully, there's a quick solution to that. What you can do is do a Z type here up at the top. You can say type of create post, for example, create post, and you can set that equal to a Z infer. And then you can say this is a type of form schema again like that and then you can set these values equal to that create post now we need to also ins import uh, zod here so let's just do that z oh, how is it i always confuse it import star as z that's it why can't it just be z in the first place uh zod there happy happy cool so now the values are inferred here so you could do values dot content right like that there we go and then here we can also like return the actual post that we get back and we can also revalidate the path so actually i'll i'll get rid of this for now because i want to show you how this is without it but how do we handle like errors and uh, 
maybe a success message if we want to send through. Well, we just return the simple object. So what you can do is say if there's like no new posts made and I'm not getting like a return from this database, then I can just return an error object like that that says could not create post. All right, and if there is a post, so new post, or you can even like check, this is gonna return one here, it's gonna send back an array. So you can just check, hey, does an ID exist here? If it exists, then we probably have a, a new post. So we can set this to maybe a success. Again, it's custom here how you name these, but I'll just say success. So error and success. Uh, so here we'll say new post created, and you can also, you know, you could return, you could just return the new post if you want as well. So we can say new post zero, like that. Cool. So now on the front end here, let's see in the on submit, we could just call this action. So we'll add use client to the top and that's fine. You can invoke this action right here in the submit if you want to. So here we go. I'll import the create post from the server action. And then here we'll say create post. And if I try to pass down values, as you can see, it automatically gets recognized. And if it's not correct here, then it's gonna error out. So values, as you can see, that's fine. Perfect, let's hit save. Let's give this a shot. Write some random messages, nothing works. Why? Because I forgot to actually fetch the damn data. So let's head over to our posts right here. And this is gonna be super simple. So for the posts here, all I'm gonna do is create this fetch posts um, server action here, which I'm gonna also import. It doesn't exist now, but let's just import it. So there we go, we'll pop it up there, fetch posts, and I'm just checking here if post has success, then just loop over it. And for the fetch post, it's gonna be super simple. It's just gonna be query all posts, and that's it. So, and there we go, look at that, boom. We queried everything. Let's try and write something, hit enter. And as you can see, nothing happens. When I hit enter though, or refresh, it does work. And that happens because this post is gonna be cached by default, okay? So the first time it loads, it caches it, and no matter, no matter if we create a post here, it's just gonna stay cached. So what we can do in a server action is revalidate that cache and refetch it. So we'll head over to our actions here and all we need to do is head over here right before we return our data and just say revalidate. And I'm gonna revalidate slash here because that's our base path. All right, and hit save. And here as well, I'll say revalidate path slash, cool. And let's hit enter and now when we type something I hit enter poof there we go okay but how do we handle like error states and success states and stuff like that and pending states well right now what you can do is just add like a dot then here and then you can get the result and if that result based on that result like if it has an error on it so you can say if result dot success for example then you can maybe set a success state if you want up here to like a message and then you can just display that in a toast or whatever. And then same for the error, you can do if result dot error, then you can catch that right here. But I'm not a huge fan of this and especially like if you wanna do a pending state as well, maybe when I hit submit, I want this to be like loading, right? That's when it gets a bit more difficult. So that's why I wanna show you this cool package called Next Safe Actions. And this gives you quite a couple of awesome things. It gives you optimistic updates by default. It has a really simple API and it automatically adds the form schema to your server action as well, which is awesome. But again, handling like on errors, on successes, pending states, this makes it super, super easy. So to install it, again, all you need to do is do MPI, MPI, MPI next safe action. And then check this out. Let's convert this create post over to the safe action post. So let's just comment everything out here that we had previously. And let's go down here and create a new one, export const. And I'm gonna name this create safe post. All right, and we're gonna set this equal to, and what we need to do is import use safe action. I forgot the name, I'm sorry. I hate these. Next safe, oh, we'll find them, we'll find it. That's the one, create safe action client. And we are gonna initialize it down here. Now check this out. We're gonna say export const. Again, we're gonna pre pretty much copy paste this over. I'm gonna just name this create safe post like that. 
And rather than setting it, setting it equal to an async function, we're gonna set it equal to this action that we imported. Okay, and in here we can, this is the cool part, just pass in the form schema directly. So that's really cool. And then here you have your async function, but check this out. You can straight away pull out the content or any other data that's in there and use it. So I just, I, this looks so clean to me. I don't know, but I much prefer this. And then here we can check if there's no content and something went wrong. So we can add that clause. This pretty much stays the same here, creating the new post. So that's perfectly fine. And then this bit as well can be copy pasted. All right, so it almost looks identical on the back end. However, on the front end, we have much more flexibility. So now check this out, rather than doing all of this on the front end, I'm just gonna delete that. And here I'm gonna say create safe post instead. Also this use action hook. All right, so now rather than doing all of that jazz down there, what we can do is go down here and say const equals to use action, and then we can pass down that create safe post. And this is happening now, so I'll see you back in half an hour. So now that we have this hooked up, check it out. I can just pull out execute. I can pull out the result, the status of this, anything I want. I can also have access to callback functions here, like on success if I want to. I can get the data console log data like that. And I can do any handling here as well if I want to. If, for example, if our data dot error, see it's kind of the same as we did here, then I can handle my errors. Now check this out, what about status? Well, I can just go down here, I can say make sure this is disabled if status triple equals, and look at that, we have TypeScript as well supported here, executing, right? If it's executing, disable it. So now if I click, oh, nothing's gonna happen yet because we haven't ran this action yet, but we have this execute to use instead. So we can just go anywhere and add this execute. Can pass in the values as well. So everything still works the same. This gets cleared out a little bit, but this is a it's just much more concise. It reminds me of kind of how you structure your React query code as well. So I really like that. Not only that, but you have callbacks for stuff like on execute, which is really nice as well, because when you want to type something in a hit enter, look at that creating product. See, you can have like a toast popping up or something to show that it's creating it. You also have an on error here that we can use that's just going to catch general server errors. So you can also have full control over that. So let me show you. You can do if error dot, and as you can see, it gives you three types. So if there's a server error, you can handle that in a certain way. If there is an error on the validation, you can handle that in any way. So the API is fantastic. And that's pretty much it. It's quite simple and straight to the point. They also added a bunch of new features in it. So keep an eye on next safe actions. They have optimistic updates now, which I'll have a look and I'll get back to you. So that's gonna be it for server actions in this episode. And you know, I said I have a little teaser to show you, boom, boom, boom. Well, here it is. I'm happy to announce that the next 14 course is just around the corner and we're gonna be using all this fun tech, all this new stuff in it. And yeah, drop a sub, drop a like, and I'll just leave you with this preview. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.